I'm sure many of us will know what this is. This is a power supply unit, and, well, this powers your PC. However, there's a limit on how much they can push out. And do you know what part uses the most power? The graphics card. But what if I told you that for under £30, you could have a graphics card that could just run on any power supply? That means OEM, or just any PC you pick up off the street. So sit back, relax, as we find out what card this is. This right here is the AMD Radeon R7250. Released in quarter four of 2013, the card is fairly recent and bears a large resemblance to its predecessor, the HD7750. Many would cite the card as a rebrand. However, specifications wise, it differs a little bit. With 384 stream processors, as well as 56 text units, paired with one gigabyte of GDDR5 VRAM. A two gigabyte variant was also available, but only used standard DDR3 RAM. This made it a little bit slower, so I'd recommend opting for the faster one gigabyte version if possible. So far, so good. But the R7250 does have an Achilles heel. The minimal 128-bit bus hampers the data flow of the card, and many reviewers stated this in reviews and said it crippled otherwise good performance. Originally retailing for £55 or US $60, the card was a nice entry-level price. However, in today's used market, hovers from around the £20 to £30 mark, a decent price even if you only wanted it as a display adapter. However, we're going to be using it as more than something just to display pretty pictures. We want to see how it runs games. Up first we have Grand Theft Auto 5. Running the game with a mixture of medium and high settings at 720p, yield us an average of around 42 FPS. A very smooth experience to say the least, and definitely not bad for a sub £30 card. The minimums as well in this case fared fairly well, hovering around the 30 FPS mark and only ever hitting down to 32 FPS at the very worst of times. There was no stutter at all, even when driving or flying, some of the most intense things to do in a game such as Grand Theft Auto 5. Of course, when we upped the resolution to 1080p, which unfortunately I didn't record, we saw averages that were around the 30 FPS mark still, still a very playable experience at either resolution you choose to play at. So far, a card capable of being powered by any system is doing well in some AAA games that are very recent. Following this is Counter-Strike GO, which hit averages around 98 FPS. The game was more than playable at its default settings, which included a mixture of low and medium at a resolution of 720p. You could of course play the game at a higher resolution quite happily, as the card seems to take all source games in its stride. This would make the card ideal, as although CSGO is heavily CPU dependent, it runs remarkably well on any processor that is more recent than Core 2 Duo, meaning you could have a relatively cheap gaming PC by just adding this card. That's this Fallout 4 up next, which was running on a mixture of low and medium settings at the 720p resolution. This gave us an average of around 36 FPS, which was more than playable. It did, however, drop below this to a low of 20 FPS once, which was a singular stutter that occurred. However, for the vast amount of game time, the consistency of FPS remained around the average of 36. All previous Bethesda titles should be playable on the card, as Fallout 4 has proved again and again to be one of the most demanding. Whether or this be for the sake of bad optimization or nice effects, the card is suited to the nature of these kind of games. A title I haven't tested before, Mad Max, a game which reflects just how well modern games can be optimised. Running the game with a mixture of both medium and high settings at the 720p resolution gave us both nice visuals and a decent FPS to match, with averages hovering around that 45 FPS mark. Our minimum was not too much smaller this at 39 FPS. The game was consistently smooth and you could have upped the resolution or settings comfortably to 1080p without too much of a performance hit. A great example of how ready this card is to handle modern AAA titles. Finally, to round off, we have a game that was surprisingly demanding for the card, Doom. The game has been updated to remove Vulcan support for cards that don't have 2GB of VRAM. In this case, RR7250 having 1GB of VRAM was not supported. However, in-game, the card registers only having half a gigabyte of VRAM, so I'm not quite sure how accurate these results are. Whether the game is updated at all or not to actually add Vulcan back in, I don't know. However, running in OpenGL, we saw the game average around 30fps, win minimums of around 23fps and it really revealed how taxing modern gaming can be on the card due to that 1GB VRAM constraint. So do I recommend this card? Well, for the sub £30 price tag, it has an amazingly low power consumption, good 2017 performance, and supports DirectX 12 and Neuro APIs, so it's ready for the future. You can, however, put it in virtually any PC and it will work, meaning for £30 you could have a PC that offers similar gaming performance to that of a next-gen console, 
which is just something great really in terms of price and performance. It's around half the price of a U750 Ti and although not offering the performance of that, it does have the same power consumption. Although in 2017, the VRAM does prove to be a bit of a constraint for the card and performance isn't quite up to scratch with some of the newest CPUs. However, you're not going to be pairing this with the latest processors and it'll happily sit inside a second gen Intel Dell PC and give you a performance similar to what we've seen today. So thank you very much for watching. Good night. And if you enjoyed this video, why not see what else we've been up to around the channel? They spin right round. Somebody once told me the world is gonna roll me. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed.